Shanae, your soul shine sister, here with our second installment of our reflexology learning series. And today's lesson is history of reflexology. As you may remember from last week's time we spent together, which I loved people commenting, trying out some of the techniques on their own, uh, but remember we covered zone theory, so how our body is separated into different zones that are also linked to our feet. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, corresponding with our hands as well as our feet. Today, I wanted to give you a little more background about reflexology because I know during this research phase, I've learned a lot that I didn't know before. One major thing is, I thought it was all traditional Chinese medicine. You know, as a kid, I always was just like, whoa, Asian culture's so cool, they have like, you know, Kung Fu, and they have cool herbs, and they do acupuncture, they put needles in you, which, those are all facts, but I also always believed that reflexology came from China, or traditional Chinese medicine. Well, what I'm here to reveal today is that's not quite accurate. It's actually a little more here on the home front in America. But I digress, let's go ahead and just see what is our closest link to reflexology throughout history. Well, a big one comes from ancient Egypt. Now, as you can see, we have uh, an image found in the physician's tomb in Egypt, stating about 2335 BC. As you can tell, you see two different physicians, one whom is treating somebody's hands, right there you can kind of see, treating a hand, and the other side where my thumb is, they're treating uh, the patient's foot, which corresponds with reflexology, these reflexes that are found in our hands and our feet. You could also tell that the physician treating the individual, their feet, is turning away. It was believed that it was seen as improper to face somebody while you're working on their feet like you're at a lower level. So you would turn away, hold their foot, boop, 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 and work it out. Um, also, in the Americas, there is um, a lot of supporting evidence that the Cherokee Nation used uh, foot massage and pressure techniques to heal people through their feet. Um, but also, in South America, the Incan civilization. These are in black and white, uh, but you can kind of see there's a hand there holding a stone and this stone, uh, these stones can be found today and are used to specifically work with the feet. So I know for some of you, you're like, I'm not feeling anything in my feet. Uh, perhaps some of our feet, that it's very thick, walking around barefoot or in sandals. So for the Incas, having a tool like that was ideal to get into those pesky, tender spots. Um, but let's go ahead and go to the early 20th century, so the early 1900s. Um, our first figure, historical figure, is William H. Fitzgerald, M.D. Now, he was an ear, throat, and nose doctor at Boston City Hospital in Connecticut. And what he found, I'll go ahead and put him up on our board. What he found is when he would apply pressure to the fingertips, either using metal clamps or um, elastic bands wound tightly or we have right here this one look like some safety pins or not safety pins excuse me uh, closed pins thank you for sending me the psychic message uh, he found that once he held steady pressure the facial region would become numb and he was able to perform surgery without any anesthesia. Ooh, pretty intense. So his whole thing was just holding on. So this is William H. Fitzgerald. He'd have them hold on 
or sometimes even have patients hold, hold a comb, pressing the teeth of the comb into their hand, and they would find a numbing effect so we can perform these procedures. Now this was the formation of zone therapy, um, and that is what we covered basically last week in our lesson. So the idea that different areas of the body are aligned with specific zones. And in the case of Dr. Fitzgerald, he used it to numb patients out and use it uh, so he can perform surgery. Now there was a doctor who worked aside, um, aside him, beside him, named Dr. Riley, who helped him de develop uh, zone therapy. But it's this woman, I don't have an ideal image. Yes, reflexology was developed by this lovely lady. Her name is Eunice D. Ingham. And she wrote the book, Stories Our Feet Tell. And I'll go ahead and put a link of that. Now Eunice was a physical therapist that worked with Dr. Riley and Dr. Fitzgerald, the one with the little clamps. And she ended up working with hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of patients and found that not only were the zones aligned, but also that the feet were an exact reflection of the body with its various organs, functions, and structures. So she found this after doing um, lots of research and through her experience was really the founder of reflexology as we know it today. So this was Dr. or she wasn't a doctor, she was a physical therapist, so this was Eunice Ingham. So basically what she came to be to know through her years and years of research, she had different people who came from Vancouver who learned under her that built institutes um, but this is really the foundation of what we know as reflexology today. And what she established through her research are a few different facts. Our first one is reflexes on the feet are a mirror image of all the glands, organs, and parts of the body. The right foot contains all the reflexes of the right side of the body and the left contains and represents all the left side of the body. So there are organs predominantly on your right side that are on your left and they would be able to be stimulated through your feet. Okay. The next contribution Eunice brought to this wonderful field was the idea when there's a problem with a body part the corresponding reflexes in the feet will reveal a sensitivity when pressure is applied. So if you're feeling around on your foot and you feel pressure, then our sensitivity from that pressure, there is some kind of problem or imbalance elsewhere in the body. Working through these reflexes brings changes in the body and reduction in symptoms. So we'll go ahead and put this up as well. And then our last note, reflexology can be of great benefit in relieving all the stress-related disorders in the modern world for people of all ages. So this is a safe practice for people of all ages, though there are um, some contraindications, but overall a great healing modality for people everywhere, especially in today's society. So, just a little recap. We saw that, oh, I didn't put our little guys on here. Our ancient Egyptian brethren in the physician's tomb left us imagery of their reflexology practices. We found that in America, Dr. William H. Fitzgerald, MD, a throat, nose, and ear doctor, developed this technique of clamping the ends of the fingers to have a numbing effect so he could perform surgery. He was assisted by Dr. Riley in developing what is known as zone, ther uh, zone theory. And then Eunice, our girl Eunice, she is the one who really developed, honed in her skills and honed in all of her research to develop what we know today as reflexology. Reflexology is one of the most popular complementary healing modalities out there. 
And for a lot of folks, they, they don't really know 100% how it works, why it works, or whatever. But time after time, there, with the research support, has shown that there are significant changes that occur by stimulating these reflexes in the feet and having positive benefit to the rest of the body. Well, I hope that you have found value in this video. Feel free to share, like, um, maybe invite somebody into our Facebook group of Holistic Living with your Soul Shine Sista. That way, somebody who needs to see this information and hear it freely given uh, may find exactly what they're looking for. It was nice talking to you, and I'll see you next week with our next installment of our Reflexology series. Oh yeah, and shout out to my girl Lauren Hill. I'll be seeing you next Tuesday at Red Rocks. Woohoo!